The Panthers Poundcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on the show are solely those of the presenters and in no way reflect the views of the Panthers organization. Listener discretion is advised. You got it. This week's episode of Panthers Poundcast, I'm Alex Helms, here with Los Panteras. Yes. And Drew Micah's <laughs> Plow. Hello, Panther Nation. Hola. And, again, we're just going to yes. jump right into it this week and uh, find out what's the news with Los Panteras. Hey. So maybe we should wish our listeners a one- I hope they had a great week. You ever think about that? We should engage you know, them instead of just talking about You're very impersonal. Stuff. Sometimes. Yeah, we're like, maybe we should introduce ourselves slowly, like ring a doorbell and like... Uh, like the Mormons. Let me tell you a little bit about ours. Hey, listeners. My name's Alex Helms. A.K.A. Splinter. A.K.A. Splinter. I'm here with Los Panteras. That would be me. It wasn't supposed to turn into the view, you fucks. <laughs> I'm just saying. And we do hope that you had a wonderful yeah. St. Patrick's Day you know, past well, Holiday week. Hope you didn't get too drunk. Hope you're not still hungover. Right. On this or day. in jail. Or if you did, that yeah, you're feeling better it. already. Hope you didn't get a STD or anything. Yeah. Welcome. You Thanks know? for listening. Hell yeah. Thanks for listening. Now let's go to fucking news. You know. Yeah. That was yeah. a bad. Let's wasn't talk it? about motherfucking Paul Solii. Yeah. How do you say it? Paul Solii. How do you say it? Solii. Three times fast. Solii. 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 That's a fast speed. I'm going to be in the stands chanting that this season. Uh, two years, seven million. Yep. Three guaranteed. Probably last contract this big fatty will sign. A hey, hog molly we're happy by to have Gettleman's him. definition. This is exactly the kind of player he Absolutely. likes to get. For us. And it's an incredibly player friendly deal too, because you got the four million dollars guaranteed in the first year. Right. So it was a big incentive for him to come here. Also, he was quoted as saying that he hasn't had a whole lot of success in the playoffs, so he wanted to come here and see what it felt like. Which is what a lot of people are saying. Everybody knows we're about to be in the playoffs probably five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years in a row, maybe. Let's hope. I think this I also think so. gives uh, Cam Newton and other players a chance, like uh, what Jared Allen tried last year. Uh, these yeah. guys, Peanut Tillman, these great players that haven't won a ring are going to want to come through Carolina to say they played with Cam Newton. Absolutely. And Luke. And, and we've Luke. already seen and TD still. multiple but examples of this. Long term. It, Harper was uh, one of the first that I can think of that exactly. came here. Uh, Mike Tolbert taking that uh, really team-friendly deal the first CJ, time that he came right. here. CJ. Uh, Charles Tillman last year, Jared yeah. Allen. You're going to start to see these aging players who are chasing a ring, looking for a playoff contender, looking at us. Looking at the Panthers. Another aspect is role players who are misused, such as Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah. We end up getting studs out of guys that are, you know, wastes of the places. They just show up here and, and, and display. Well, Ted Ginn's another one. I mean, we use people Ted to their example. talents and instead of other teams. They, they're only good them. when they play with us. Yeah, pretty much. And Ted Ginn has said as much that he went chasing the paycheck uh, and went to the Cardinals for one year, was completely misused and underutilized, and came back yeah, after one, one touchdown, year. touchdown, right? It's it's something like that. It was just not a good year for him. He comes back and has Production 10 touchdowns. increased 1,000%. Yeah. Right. He has 10 <laughs> touchdowns last season. Ridiculous. But anyways, we're awesome here in Carolina, in case you weren't aware. That's how yeah, we welcome do. to new listeners. Um, we love you too, potentially. I don't know. Let's not get too loving to the listeners. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to get too, relationship. too attached. Okay, yeah. I don't <laughs> right now, be the housewife here. Yeah. Anyways. So what else is news? Los Panteras. Man, some sad news. Quarterback Trey Walker driving his uh, motorcycle. It was a dirt bike. Dirt bike in the dark. Dark-ish. No lights. He didn't have a light. No helmet. No lights, and he had no helmet. Twenty-three years He's old. A, he wears a helmet for a living, and he doesn't wear a helmet on a motorcycle. Going oh. into his second year as an NFL player. This is tragic. He's like how old? 22, 23, 23, 23, 23, 23 years old. old. It's yeah. awful. It's gone. It's shitty. Oh, the yeah. family. Rest in peace, devastated. man. You know, Dawson. Pray yes. With your family. Sorry about that. Positive vibes your way. That sucks. More, more Raven news though. That's way more positive than that. 
Eric Weddle uh, has signed with the Ravens. Uh, the former San Diego Charger is set to make roughly $6.5 million a year over the four-year contract. Also, uh, wide receiver Mike Wallace, who has spent some time with the Vikings, yep. the Dolphins, the Steelers. Uh, he also signed with the Ravens for two years, $11 million. Uh, both kind of what you expect from those players. Yeah. And Mike Wallace, is he's on a kind of a prove-it deal. Uh, it's a little bit more than you would expect, considering his production hasn't been great well, over his career with, uh, with since Smitty. leaving the Steelers. Yeah, there's yeah. one Raven that's worth a shit, and that's Steve Smith, 89. We love you. Go to hell the rest of you people in black and purple. Right. Well, we'll be back with our main topic, and uh, so stay tuned. Rough. This is just how I feel about it. Fuck your team has been replaced with fuck you today only. Indeed. With Jamaicus, the plow. And the rest of us here. All two of you. But today's <laughs> all of us. The non existent studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you should do a good one too. Anyhow, this week's edition focuses on an old fuck face. And his name is Goose Gossage. He's, He's a, a guest instructor. He's a I legend, read. a New York Yankee legend. Well, first, of all, I don't give a shit. Okay, he's a punk ass with a shitty attitude, and he has no business. And this, you know, I don't have to really have a reason for this, but I don't like reading people's shit talking to my quarterback, Mister Cam Newton. <laughs> That's and a good this, reason. This fella, it's a good reason to say fuck you to somebody. It is a good reason, and especially with a little bit of news going on. You know, this this old fucking white piece of shit. He's all like, "It's a shame. It breaks my heart to see the direction this game is going." What, do we want a bunch of Cam Newtons running around so if no one keeps it in check, which there is no one keeping in check? First off, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, talking second about... off, Cam Newton is so electrifying. Yes, that's it. It's electrifying. He's fun to watch. He's the greatest player. He's just fun, and you can say what you want. When Whatever. you say electrifying, this guy is equating the electrification that you feel to uh, something totally different. Yeah, well, some people are going to call the race card. Some people are going to say you're an old senile fuckhead. Regardless, fuck you very much. No one gives a shit about you cheating ass Yankees. Baseball sucks anyways. Yes, they do. Fuck you. I don't care. It's my segment, and fuck everything that I say fuck you to, including the Yankees. Oh, okay. you're gonna say fuck the Yankees? And fuck A Rod. Fuck. Uh, I'll definitely back you, that so one wait, up. The, fuck the, A Rod. The, the Yankees don't cheat, so having a salary that is five times higher than other teams. Baseball is shenanigans. <laughs> Dude, I know their whole pay structure. That's true, that's not else, we're talking apples and oranges, baseball and football. You think the Panthers that. couldn't win the Super Bowl every year if we could spend five times what we've been doing teams it could? for eighty or ninety years so far? So, like, when you can play 162 games or something, it's obviously not that. <laughs> so fuck baseball. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all. So Cam Newton rules. So go to hell, old by man. By that regards, like uh, NASCAR would be a better sport than baseball. NASCAR is akin to like playing jacks in the backyard. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> There's your love. I'm just kidding. If you no like offense, NASCAR you and a lot of NASCAR I don't, fans. I don't care about fast cars. I respect shit. NASCAR. You know, whatever. I don't me too. follow. You know it. what? It's badass though. It. Hockey. Hockey is badass. Now that's a man sport. And so it's a blue collar. Non complaining, no fucking flashy, really ego y, flashy, blingy fucking. Sport I like competitive cooking. I watch Chopped. I like competitive eating because I like to eat. Cooking sucks on my end though. Yeah, you're not a good cook. I'm not that bad of a cook on like one or two things. I think you might have cooked like nothing for me the entire time I've known you. The tw- twenty. Years. He made me your, ghost pepper pasta and your... didn't tell me ghost peppers were in it. <laughs> well, it was good though. Was it? Yeah. yeah once my was on mouth purpose. was not numb anymore. Carlos. Yeah. Are we recording? Oh, yeah. We are recording. And also, happy belated birthday to Splinter this week, too, by the way. He yeah. turned 30 this year. He's yeah. old as fuck. Yeah. 3-0. I forgot about that. And then... We're going to 
kind of let you guys get to know us a little bit, tell you a little bit of our history, and uh, they're so lucky. <laughs> they are so lucky the, uh, to get to know us. Just to get to know. Oh man. The wonder that is Jamaicas and Splinter. And Los Panteras. And Los Panteras. Los Panteras. Yeah, screwed up that time. So. <laughs> That's good. We'll I guess. Get it right. <laughs> the easiest question would be, when and how did you get into the Panthers? And we'll start with Los Panteras. I mean, I was down here from New England. <clears throat> Never a Patriots fan, mind you. I was a Giants fan before, you know, the Panthers came around and uh, was working, uh, some of the tailgate parties, I DJ, and um, I was DJing for a conservative newspaper, the Rhino Times, uh, I was right there next to the dog pound on Moorhead, and I was DJing, we were giving away ribs and pizza and free beer on Sunday for two hours before the game. Can't argue with that. No, not at all. And I, I was working for free publicity in their magazine, they created this stupid logo for me when I first moved down here, it was like some elfin boy. And he, they basically just took the ears down and shaped it different and put a damn goatee on it. And that was big pop. I, if I'm oh man, if I could find that logo, that would be great. But um, Put it up on the screen. It, anyway, so the way they would pay me initially, um, besides the advertising, was tickets. So I got to go to every home game uh, in 2002 season. And, I mean, you can't help fall in love. There was a connection between the Giants and the Panthers for me because John Fox had came, came down here mm -hmm. uh, right. from New York. So I was like, uh, it worked out, man. After that Super Bowl run, I was hooked. I had a chance to pick teams the following season. I had a Tiki Barber jersey in one hand. and um, I was with you on the couch that Julius day. Peppers jersey in the other. And I picked the Peppers and I put it down. I've been a Panthers fan ever since. Well, like 13, 14 years now. Um, what's the next question? Uh, well, let's well, go. We uh, get a turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought what we were... a selfish person. Well, no, I thought <laughs> the way we were formatted that I was going to do all three, then you do three, and then you do them. But... You're fired. Yeah, no, I'm totally not on the right page totally, right now. Totally fired. I worked all weekend. I'm exhausted. And he watched children. And I watched children. His wife was out of town, and he did not do anything troublesome. Instead, he watched children. I had a good time, man. Got, got to go see Zootopia. So, I tried my daughter. Was that good? It was so clever. It was very good. It's like a cop movie. He picked the bad guy. With animals. I knew the bad guy was. So, Jamaicus, how did you get into the Panthers? Um, I got into, I've been into football since I was a wee lad. I won my first five dollar gamble on I believe the ninety two Super Bowl. Is that when the stupid Cowboys won it? Mm -hmm. Somewhere in the early nineties. I was five or six. Made five bucks. Thought I was rich. Football became loved. I enjoyed the video games early. And of course, we get a team in the hometown. Hard to not get excited about that. I had my uh, grandfather. He would take me down to Clemson. You know, so I was hooked early on. We had the, the like that shirt you gave me, the one you found extras of with the Panther in the back. You know, we had all the original yep. merchandise. All the it was just exciting. We didn't get the PSLs first year, unfortunately. My grandmother talked him out of that, but we caught early games and just I got into them right when they came here. Stoked to have a team finally. What about you, Mister Splinter? Well, uh, like you, I'm a native-born Charlottean, so. This city has always been very important and very close to me. And uh, early in my life, I was more into the Hornets. Uh, I was more of a basketball fan. I was at the Cardinals game the first season, so that was my first Panthers experience. But I didn't really fall in love with the team and really dive full force in until about 2007-2008. Uh, I actually went to the preseason game, I believe it was against the Washington Redskins in 2008, and that was when I really got hooked because we just absolutely trampled them. Right. Uh, but that's uh, that's when I knew that it was, uh, it, it was a done deal and I was going to be collecting all this crap for years to come. We're actually here in uh, your house in uh, the studio. Uh, and yet you have a ridiculously impressive collection of Panthers stuff. We should put some pictures up on the... We'd like to be around champion gear. We should put some stuff like up our on team the Facebook gives us and the now. YouTube. Absolutely. Well, you're the one who said you boycotted videos. What are you talking to me for? Boycotted videos? Yeah, that's what I heard Carlos say. Yeah. Er, he quits. Los Panteras <laughs> says... Just call me Los. Listen here. Call yourself Los. What's the next question? Everyone quits. All right. Los Panteras. Uh, <laughs> Just Los is good. What was your first 
Pantera. No, no, okay. We're gonna go Let's with that. What was your first not? Pantera album? I, I never I never owned one. I actually Ooh. didn't get first of all. Thank you. Uh secondly, uh yeah, let me listen to Pantera, man. Intro- I mean I knew of them. You introduced me to them really uh, to love them and regret clearly never being able to see them play live. Carlos was too busy. I never had a Pantera going to yet now it's my name. Fucking fish shows to learn about Pantera. First Pantera album? Actually, mine was Reinventing the Steel, believe it or not. And then I went back and got all the old shit. Did you have it on CD or cassette? CD. Mine was Vulgar Display. And I nice. got a three-pack of the first three. Anyway, moving on to the first Panthers yeah, yeah. game. The first Carlos. Panthers game. I don't remember my first Panthers game. Fire. What? I remember um, I used to get these nice seats um, right behind one of the, uh, on one of the ends of the field uh, through my sister's job. She'd get them once in a while, so I'd go to the games. Before Jeanette, yeah, she got from what what Premier when she worked for Premier, yeah, she had a little hookup on that, so it was nice to go once in a while. And I I guess I saw like three or four games, um, definitely a couple preseason games. And you're talking the year 2002, (sighs) 02, um, yeah, no, I mean, before that, because I I was down here since '99, so I'd seen games up to that point. But it wasn't until I was going every single week. He's a bad working. ticket stuff collector. I met or he'd know Rick this. Flair. I met Ricky Steamboat. I met uh, um, Jerry Richardson came around, shook everybody's hands. Nice. It was cool. Yeah, it was, man, it was 90 minutes on a Sunday afternoon just playing whatever, classic rock, whatever people wanted. You got the other guy across the street with the fox, and then you had the dog pal. Um, the other side of 277, it was nice. Good deal. And I got paid with that. I remember, man, I, so I can't. Remember this specific? I gotta look it up. I remember, man. I can't remember. I, can't remember. <laughs> I remember that I can't remember, guys. <laughs> that at least yeah, I do remember. You do that remember, I remember that you don't remember. Was Absolutely. That, your first, that wasn't your first game. The Redskins preseason was it? No, my first game was actually, uh, like I said, Arizona Cardinals. Um, oh, the playoff game? It, no, it, the for very first season. Oh, okay. uh, the roll. very first season, I went down to Clemson Stadium with my dad. Uh, you recall it, what week that was? Did you look it up? I didn't because I didn't look up mine either. I know what game it was, but I don't remember the week. It it was. I we need a researcher. It was middle of the season. Ask questions. Yeah, you, you do it. Or <laughs> a very avid, brave listener could send us research. We need an intern, yeah. research intern, preferably a hot female. Just kidding. Not, but I just remember that I got right to be on TV at that Arizona Cardinals game. Right. And since then, I've seen the Arizona Cardinals Mini play splint. probably more than any team in the NFC South. Yeah, because they won't. NFC South? Yeah. It, I've, it, I've seen the NFC South teams play every year. <laughs> but a Brazilian? Yeah, about a Brazilian times. I was at the playoff game last season for... Um, when we trounced Arizona? Yeah, Again. In, in, the, in the fog. No, no, not this last season, the season before. That was Arizona. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my first playoff we game. We always play Arizona in the playoffs. What was your first playoff game? Is that not on there? That's a, that's our next question. Yeah, Calm down. Jumping oh, down. sorry. Just call sorry. Like, oh, God. Come my first right game is a pretty cool one. Yeah. It was also like Splinter the first year down at Death Valley. Went down with uh, Father. Where is that? Clemson? Yeah, Clemson. Death okay. Valley is what they call it. Father figure of the time and said grandfather. Well, we went to that famous Jets game where Sam Mills recorded the interception and won us our first one. Hell I was at the yeah. first victory. That's that was awesome. my first game. It's pretty fucking cool. You're like the bloodline of the Panthers. I remember the, the traffic was so terrible. It was just awful. And I was, you know, I was, what the hell? That was, I was fucking nine. I was nine years old that year. And it was just awful traffic. And the stadium sucked. College Stadium it was shitty bleachers. Yeah. But it, it was cool. It, it, you just remember it. It was just neat. And then I have I have my ticket stuff still. And I have a purple shitty marker. It says on the back, Panthers first win as a score. I think it was like, what the fuck was it? 21-16 or ah. It's 16 something. Fuck me. I don't remember. I'm bad just like you. I don't. I remember that I don't remember. You remember that you don't remember. But I remember that game, and it was pretty sweet. And I'm happy to say that was my first game. Well, we'll be right back with the second half of our main topic. Hey, this is Alex Holmes from the Panthers Poundcast. Uh, please be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, subscribe to us on SoundCloud. Uh, leave us comments, send us messages. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and as always, keep pounding. Keep pounding. All right, we're back with the second half of our main topic. We're just kind of letting you guys get to know us a little more, a little bit of our backstories, what makes us Panther fans. Uh, let's just kind of jump right into the next question. Los Pantera. Uh, I'm Los Panteras. 
Los Pantera. What was your first playoff game? Honestly, last year. Uh, the year before the season passed. The Arizona, it was nice, man. It was all foggy, and it was just like just the Panthers and fuck the rest of the world. And we beat the shit. We made Ted Ginn fumble that ball. And uh, the whole place just lit up. You're talking about the 2014-2015 Right, season. exactly. Yeah, that game was kind of shitty at the beginning because stupid person kept fumbling oh, shit. And we, we basically spotted them 17 points. Basically, right. yeah. But then again, they had their third-string quarterback in. Right. And we mauled his ass. Who, uh, who was that? Uh, was, uh, was it Drew? St- no, it was Ryan Lindley. Whoever the hell it was. Yeah, who, who was their second string? We right. started Drew to, Stanton. Oh, yeah, Drew Stanton. We turned over the damn ball, gave him the ball in the 40 twice, and they got touchdowns or field goals. It was so annoying. But then we beat the fuck out of him, so it was all right. Yeah, I remember it a little less negatively, but... No, no. We, I mean, we, we were when there. When you spot what? someone 17 points in a playoff game, that's like a that's a cardinal sin. That's yeah. horrible. And it's fucking Burson. He fumbled twice in a row. Right. He, fuck you, Burson. Just for the record. It's at Wofford College. Sorry. Experience. Yeah. I'm not, I'm of course, a swear to our own players. I didn't mean it. I was just kidding. I like you. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Beg for his forgiveness. What about you, Jamaicus? Me and you share the same first playoff game, sir. First year of owning PSLs. Go 10-0 and 0 at home, including the preseason. Go to that Arizona 08 playoff game where Ooh. you and I both have pretty... Well, yours is way more interesting <laughs> and ends more dramatically, so I'll get my boring one out of the way. <laughs> I was just excited to have a playoff game at home, first year of owning the PSLs. And just for the record... You know, don't buy your PSLs from the Panthers. Get them aftermarket. Because you know what my present was from the Panthers? A damn Julius Peppers autograph 8x10. Just for the record, for spending thousands of dollars. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Fucking, yeah, that game sucked. J. Stu marches down there, puts up seven, first drive. You felt so good. <laughs> the place was electric, you know. You just knew we were about to win every. You knew, I thought we were going to win the Super Bowl that year. I swear to God I did. It was like, stupid Jake's going to redeem everything. Right. No. Nah. Hell no. The world fucking crumbles, and I'm sitting there in the rain, crying like a girl. And then the Arizona Cardinals go to the Super Bowl. 33-13. 33-13. Thanks uh, for nothing, 17 turnovers later. Anyways, how do you feel about that game? Well, like you said, same game, 08 against the Cardinals. Uh, I remember that, you yeah. had PSLs. I, yeah, I didn't start getting season tickets until later on, and I needed to get tickets to this game. So... I found out that D'Angelo Williams was having a contest over at a local cell phone store. And was it AT&T? The, I can't remember what, what it was. It was, like it was either AT&T, AT&T or Sprint or Where? something like that. Over in Monroe? Oh. Yeah, over in Monroe. And you had to be one of the first hundred people in line, and you would get two free playoff tickets. And that required an overnight stay, did it not? Oh, it did. I showed up oh. at... Five o'clock. You're one of those people. Uh, I showed up. Tickets. He sure as hell was. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's awesome. Uh, five o'clock, and you got to meet D. Will, and get an autograph. Yeah, so he was there uh, pictures. That was cool. Yeah, I met yeah. him a couple of times. He's a nice guy. It, it was it, it was really great. But that night was freezing cold, and I had to wait. Uh, you stay in your car, or like actually. Yeah, I line? stayed. I stayed in my car for like they two hours. They gave you guys numbers. They gave uh, they gave us numbers. I was number eighty four. Almost 89. Big yeah. Dicks, 84. Yeah. But did we resign Big Dicks? Uh, off topic as hell. I don't think so. We need Big Dicks, anyhow. Big Dicks. Big Dicks still up in the air? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how they're going to handle Big Dicks, but um, I'll think of something about it soon. He is like Dicks. <laughs> but so I get to the game uh, after winning these tickets. Like I said, I was uh, one of the first 100 in line. And. Obviously, it just starts to go sideways oh. after the first drive, and I just get more and more angry. And the people behind us are heckling. They're, they're all Arizona Cardinals fans. For some reason, the entire section behind me was nothing but Arizona Cardinals oh, that fans. Sucks. So, it, round about halfway through the fourth quarter, I go over to say bye to my friend Mark, and as I'm doing that. One of the people that is in the same row as Mark uh, pushes Mark's mother, Sharon, who we uh, we've had uh, we've had a relationship with for a long, long time. Yeah, and things went it, dirty it, south. It, then. Yeah, I, I kind of lost it. I uh, I punched that guy. Me and Mark just started wailing on him, and we started to get escorted out. 
of the stadium and we were told that we could stay but uh fuck that game yeah we, we just kind of left after that and what was the score that. at that point oh uh, it, 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 i think that was before the last touchdown so okay. probably only 27 to 13 at that time mm-hmm. yeah. three or some shit but it it was it was blatant the writing was on the wall and just for the record it's a, a rare occurrence that splinters throw in the fisticuffs it's not like he's being some yeah right great no, exactly. badass should, on the yeah, air absolutely. he's a he's yeah. about as peaceful as fucking gone that's you know, been... that that was a a one-time thing where i was just not in the mood to deal with any bullshit. It also shows you that the Panthers can push you to the brinks of sanity and your limits. Absolutely. Thanks but they lot. prove that on an almost weekly basis. Dealing with <laughs> shitty fans in your own fucking house sucks. Yeah. So, uh, I guess that brings us to our last question is, what's your favorite Panthers moment? Oh, man. Every moment with you guys. Oh, oh sweetheart. I love you, too. I mean, you guys, <laughs> the only reason why, I, I'm not the only reason why I go, clearly. I love the Panthers, but you guys facilitate um, me coming to so many games, especially this season, relocated down here after being up in Connecticut for eight years. And now within two years, I went to like, what, five games just last season alone mm-hmm. and all my playoff games. So, um, I don't know. Maybe I had, we've had a lot of adventures, me and this guy here. Yeah. Way games are always. Amazing, yeah. The Houston sure. run was awesome. Cause then it came back and had Tampa Bay. <laughs> we stomped the shit out of them. Yeah, and we ruined Houston's playoff chances, too. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. They still haven't recovered. Um, but to me, that was like um, those two back-to-back weekends to me were like, that's that's like winning a Super Bowl. Now, this season, you know, we got a whole bunch of new memories to cull from. But, yeah, man, uh, Arizona, <laughs> Seattle, <laughs> uh, Luke's, uh, Luke's pick, Russell Wilson, uh, after Jay Stu fucking broke off on the first play of the game, just just being there, having to sit, grab my seat because my heart is in my yeah, throat. filling the damn stadium, just moving. It, back it and was forth. absolutely ridiculous. It had like a heartbeat. It was just awesome. It really did. That's my church. It's my religion. Better than that Carolina stupid Panthers. atheist church you were part of. I told you it would turn into church. You can't call it an atheist church. Whatever. I don't have to be PC on this fucking. No, thing. no, no. It's, it's not, not a matter of being PC. Church. It's it's just like this. anyways. It's what's contradictory. your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite Panthers moment, Jamaicus? Well, which one were you gonna say? Because I was gonna comment on something different than yours. You were talking about this year's NFC yeah, Championship, it, right? This year's NFC Championship is my favorite. Well, see, I'm gonna. That would have to be way up there. Obviously, our first NFC Championship game to be yeah. witness in the flesh at our home. We beat the holy fuck out of. We really beat the holy stupid, fuck out of them. Shitty Arizona Cardinals. That's what you get. That's Coleman what you get. and, That's what and you get Boston so much. and. I've been out to Arizona Stadium twice to see two. Horrible beatdowns. Cam's first game, I'm happy to say I was at with my Nana. And then me and you went to see him get destroyed when we were 1-3. and three, And then won nine Ari- games in a row. Arizona was fun, though. Yeah, but fuck them. I hate the Cardinals, <laughs> and I hate them a lot. I do, so. And I do, too. But I don't want to, since that's his favorite moment, obviously that's great. I guess I would we just have, have to, to say, share this. I would share yeah. it with you in terms of, like, all the away experiences and stuff. Like, that's my, yeah. like, I, our first one with the Giants in 09. Stomping We Times saw the Square. last game at the Old Meadowlands. Yeah, we and did. And it was the Panthers, second string, Matt Moore, DeLome's hurt. D'Angelo's out. <laughs> Stewart's the only running back. We beat the fuck out of them. 41 9 was the final score. Stewart rushed for like 298 yards. It was Those, over 300, except they had to kneel the ball and lose the And that's yards. never been done in the Meadowlands. And, all kinds of, the last and they had, remember how they had that thing in the middle of the ceremony and they had like Seahorn and LT and, and LT all these assholes there. out there. Everyone was just sad and they were chucking beer bottles at Eli. Fuck you, Eli. You suck. And it was so great. And I got John Beeson's glove and we went on the subway and just rubbed it in. It was just a good time. It was a great time. Away games are my favorite moments kind of because I like to be that dickhead at the game that just the experience ruins it, of it for all. other people as long as we're kicking ass. Because right. I don't ever run out of shit to talk as long as we're not sucking. Hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, my favorite moment, like we said, was the NFC Championship game at home this year, right. uh, which I spent with you fine gentlemen. And uh, Great evening. we watched it up in our normal seats, 549, row 17. Come say hi. Come say hi. Uh, we watched it in our normal seats. And, and bring beer. as we And bring us beer. Oh, seriously, no, we need a disclaimer for Possibly that. a hot dog. Please, yeah. Maybe a Minute made if it's hot. Ooh, I yeah. like those frozen lemonades a lot. Those frozen lemonades are and the I best hear that deal they're in gonna, the stadium. The improvements they're doing at the stadium this year are going to be way more concessions than the 500, so there's really no excuse for you not to bring us something. Absolutely. They've got that little market up there, I finally saw. They're putting more TVs and more concessions. Yeah, And Updated raising the bit. fucking ticket price of a bazillion dollars a, t- a game, but hey, whatever. 
But anyway, we rushed from our normal seats down to the 100 levels with about five minutes to go uh, and rushed out onto the concourse just to kind of watch the last couple of seconds of the game. And there was the countdown with uh, the last 10 seconds. It was one of my top five experiences in life. <laughs> like it, it, the yeah. electricity in that stadium was just absolutely out of this world. It was rocking. Uh, to watch after the game, Cam Newton raise the George Hallis trophy and realize that we just won our first NFC championship game at home in front of our crowd and the excitement that the city is feeling, it was just, I, yeah, there's the nothing, was pulsing. there's nothing like it. Yeah. And especially like being from this city, I've never seen it this way. I've been here for 30 years yeah. and I've never seen the city as attached to a team and as excited to be from Charlotte or be from the Carolinas yeah, so as they are them. right now. Even the bandwagoners were pulling their weight. Yeah. Which were many of you, not you listening. <laughs> no, clearly, you need to be a fan. You know, my favorite part of that ceremony was, other than everything you just mentioned, what was that? Watching Terry Bradshaw have to be nice to Cam Newton. <laughs> Fuck you, Bradshaw. He's got that painful look on his face. He's like, you giant, fun, awesome person that I hate. You're winning and I hate it. Uh, Terry has always hated Cam. Yeah, and Cam knows that, and so that was the uh, he, funny he thing can to kind see. Of, he can kind of rub it in there a little really? bit. I know what you said about me, motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Cam is so much more handsome than Terry Bradshaw. He really is. Even in his glory days. <laughs> hey, let's all just be real. Cam Newton's the sexiest quarterback in there. He will yeah. be the sexiest man alive much. on even, People Even with those Shrek years, it doesn't matter. couple no. years. But uh, we appreciate you listening. Uh, this has been episode four of the Panthers Poundcast. Subscribe to that shit. Yeah, subscribe yeah, on, YouTube. on YouTube. YouTube. Subscribe to the videos. I'll make more videos, I promise. For favor, Carlos's native language. Los so, Pantera Productions. Uh, subscribe to us on SoundCloud as well. Like us on Facebook. Uh, follow us. Allow us to you don't have to bring do any new of that. content. You, really? should, you can't tell people to do that. Eat your vegetables. You I, I can, can tell people to do it. No, listen here. You should be polite about it. No. It's forced suggestion. It's like a psychological thing. Oh, we were being psychological? I fucked it up. Damn, sorry, man. Fuck. Well, that's not... Sorry. All right, All well, right. now that it's out there, would please like us. I know yeah. Clown College <laughs> didn't teach you psychology. Uh, leave us comments. Send us messages. We'd love to hear from you. Do and cardio half hour a day. As always... That's really good advice. It is good advice. <laughs> I'm Alex Helms. I'm here with Los, Los Pantera. Pantera. Go Panthers. Jamaica's Plow. Always keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Panthers Pound.